Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. Welcome to episode two、um, of Households for Glory. Just looking at worship and how during this time, during this lockdown season, which is kind of lifting a little bit,、um, how we enable households within worship.、Um, I'm Luke. And、Claire. it's my lovely wife, Claire.、Um, we,、um, I, I head at the ministry. Um, of worship.、Um, the Ministry of Worship sounds cool. The Ministry of Worship does sound cool. <laughs>、um, and Claire is, but、um, you kind of really help me out, don't you? <laughs> well, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is exciting because this is the first time that we've actually ever done anything like this.、Um, and talking to you guys, t a n k s b u r y Church, like this is, is fun.、Um, we get to use all this cool gear.、Um, but yeah, this is exciting. I'm well up for it.、Um, <laughs> today, we've, so we just had, a, we had a, a fantastic interview with Paul Man Waring、um, l- on, the, on the last one. And today, we're just going to look at the very, very broad subject, which is what. Which, which we definitely won't cover in 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah, we're not going to cover this in 10 <laughs> minutes, but we're going to give it a go. But what is worship? And I wrote a brief kind of thing, story, in one of the church magazines. Must have been two Christmases ago now,、mm-hmm. or maybe just after that, on this topic of what is worship.、Um, and it's a huge topic, but I don't, I don't really know how to sum it up all in one thing. So I have my notes here、um, to keep me company.、Um, but I think one, one of the most important things to me、um, as the worship pastor here is. I think I, I encapsulated this in the magazine, but, and I described it as pouring out the gushings of our heart. And just to unpack that a little bit, there's so much that goes on in our heads, in our lives, in our circumstances. And there's so much that we could be inwardly, inwardly looking at. You know, when you're in a, a worship, Sort of time, time of worship. And I've certainly been there before. And you kind of feel maybe self conscious that you're questioning how bold you are being in that moment. Am I meant to raise my hands now? Or am I meant to be singing at the top of my lungs? Or am I meant to be doing anything that is worshipful? And I just wanted to say that although those are very Understandable things. But one of, the, one of the worst enemies for worship is self consciousness. And the thing is, worship is complete abandonment to ourself. And so often when we look at the problem, it's actually more of a problem looking at the problem rather than looking at the solution. Which is Jesus and fixing our eyes on Him always. Now, He longs to see a people determined to exalt Him above any circumstance, above anything that we're going through, above anything that we're going through. And we worship Him because of His worth, not because of what we can get out of it. I've done this before where I've Been singing or worshipping in a way that is almost trying to manipulate God into doing something to me or for me or giving something to、mm-hmm. me. Hey, I'm going to worship now because I want to get something out of it. Rather than, no, 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 this isn't about me. This isn't about what I want or what I'm going through. And although those things are very understandable, we all go through it.、Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is by looking at the problem, we're not going to solve it. By looking at the solution, the answer, we're gonna, all of our problems are going to dissipate.、Um, not maybe straight away, but certainly our hearts.、Mm-hmm. Certainly in our hearts, we are giving of ourselves. And in a way, that's what you could call surrender.、Um, I don't know if you want to say anything. 
no, it's off good. the back of that. I think when I was thinking about what I would say, um, as Luke said, it is a massively broad subject. <laughs> so it's like, where do you even start? <laughs> but the one thing that came to my mind, um, which I've shared with our worship leaders before, um, was um, I was at a conference years ago now and Kim Walker was talking about how, as, as worship leaders, how we engage the congregation, but also how we just engage with them and see it as a more of a, we're in this together rather than us on stage, you down there. And I remember she spoke about this connection has to be established before this one is. Yeah. And, and that's, I don't, we obviously, that's another subject in terms of leading worship, but um, I just always remembered that and since have often been asked, and we, we again had this discussion with our worship leaders um, probably about a year ago now, and Luke asked us all um, what we felt as individuals was a strength and a weakness of ours in needing worship. And I always use this example, but um, I feel like a weakness of mine as a leader is often, I'm just on stage and all of you Chank family people, you will probably have noticed this, maybe not, but anyway, um, I will often be up on stage and I've just got my eyes shut and I'm just looking upward or I'm just in the zone locked um in. sorry locked in locked in yeah that's, that's, that's what I call it locking in and um I say that it's a weakness only because often when when you're leading it's good to engage it's needed to in that that engaging of what's happening in the room but I honestly say and this isn't to blow my own trumpet but it's a huge strength because I'm in that moment. I've got yeah. that connection established. And again, this isn't to make me look good, but I think when we think about what is worship, it is ultimately whatever it looks like, this connection has to be yeah. established first. Yeah. And um, out of that place, it feels like anything could happen. Um, and I don't know if that's even yeah. relevant. That's, but that's I really, think really good. It's so important that when we think about worship, we've asked people this question before and they're like, worship is just being fully surrender, um, fully um, abandoned in praise and dancing undignified and, you know, looking crazy. And all of that is amazing. And if that's your expression, then it's beautiful yeah. and it's amazing. And we, as the worship pastors, we totally embrace that. Um, but my heart is that when it comes to really what is the heart of worship, the real true depth, yeah. intimate side of worship, yeah. is that actually, even if we may not have a moment where we feel like we just need to dance and go crazy, um, that actually our heart and our spirits are always so connected with God anyway. Yeah. And it's often our heart and um, our heads and our minds that have to align yeah. um, because our spirits are already connected. Um, and so, but the, the reality and the awareness of that connection and our investment into that connection, for me is what I would say is worship. Yeah. Now, I know that I've used yeah. that example as a strength of mine, but also a weakness. I'm not for a second saying that I've got it all sorted yeah. um, because that connection, it's why we have to spend time with Jesus yeah. to get to know him. Yeah. We have to like read his word to get to know yeah. him. And the connection takes time to yeah. establish. And But it's a beautiful process and a beautiful journey yeah. if we say yes to it and we yeah. wholeheartedly go like fully yeah. in to invest in yeah. it. So I hope that helps. I yeah. just, that's so, so good. It, there's just the importance of um, that deep connection with him. And yeah. it's what his, he's so wanting yeah. it. He's so hungry for yeah. his kids just to come. And yeah. Yeah, that's so good. It talks about it in John 4 doesn't it? I'll just read, I'll read a little bit from there, but it talks about the heart. Um, John 4, this is the Passion Translation, just because I think, I love it because it's so poetic and it's so passionate, the Passion Translation. <laughs> um, so Jesus is talking to a woman at the well who just said, you must be a prophet. And Jesus says, believe me, dear woman, 
The time has come. Oh, the time has come when you won't worship the Father on a mountain, nor in Jerusalem, mm. but in your heart. And what he's saying there is that there isn't going to be a location that you have to go to. Because at the moment, you've got to go to the temple, right? That's where you go to worship. But when, what, I'm, what I'm about to do for you is going to mean that you become the temple. And so wherever you go, you don't have to go to this location or here or here. I'm going to reside in you. And I'm looking for your heart. I want relationship with you. Mm -hmm. I just want to love on you. And for any of us that are parents, you kind of get it. Because there's nothing our children could do to make us love them more. Um, and it's the same with Jesus. And he's just, he's jealous. He wants, he wants all of us all the time because he loves us so much. And so for me, when I look at and think about what is worship, I'm laying down or I'm putting aside all of my ambitions or mm -hmm. all of my problems yeah. and all of my insecurities. I'm just going to put them down because there's no good looking at the problem. And I'm just going to put them to one side and I'm going to fix my eyes on Jesus. And I'm going to let whatever happens happen. I don't ever want songs or thoughts or even prophetic songs that we do so often at Chank to manipulate God into doing something really precious in the moment. You know, prophetic songs that we sing are normally our songs to the Lord. And then sometimes the Lord's song is his song to us. Hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. Let me say that again. Prophetic songs, so times that we sing out prophetically or quite often we're kind of improvising on the spot. It's normally our song to the Lord. But then sometimes there's like a corporate moment hmm. where there's maybe a chorus, a really well-known chorus like turn your eyes upon Jesus or something like that. And that's normally the Lord's song to us. Mm -hmm. And it really, thinking about it, we need to kind of uh, wrap this up in a, in a moment, but thinking about it, when, we, when I think of what is worship, it is actually kind of simple. As vast as it may seem, but in doing whatever we do, doing it in a way that, because praise, praise in general requires an action, right? Whether it's expressing or singing, it requires an action or even sitting and waiting, it's still an action. But summing kind of all that up, it's in whatever we're doing in the moment or together, it's placing a value mm -hmm. on the worth of Jesus and what he's done and recognizing his value, recognizing his worth, that he is worthy, that he is good, that he loves us, all of that stuff. Um, so I, I really kind of want to do more, um, but I hope this has been useful, um, guys. And We just bless you yeah. on the journey of, yes, we've told you some um, of our thoughts behind what is worship, but we ultimately just bless you in in your journey of discovering what yeah. worship is to you and what that looks like to you. And I think it's always important to, I suppose, the reality of how in different seasons it can look so different as well. That ultimately, you know, like what I said, it's about yeah. this connection, and that, I mean, that can happen regardless yeah. of what season we're in. But even just our expressions or what that practically looks like changes from season to season. And that would probably be a great topic for another time, but yeah. we just bless you in, yeah. in this season of yeah. discovering what worship looks like to you when we actually can't all be together yeah. um, in one room, which we all so long for and <laughs> wish could happen sooner. Um, but yeah, so we, we, we just bless you yeah. in that. Um, yeah. And just have fun yeah. and go and go on journeys and yeah. adventures with Jesus. Yeah. And 
it'll yeah. always be beautiful. <laughs> Let this really inspire you and just encourage you. Yeah. Um, I think a final thing from me, just don't feel like you have to do anything or say anything or be anything. Sometimes just sitting mm -hmm. and being and resting um, is more than enough. Yeah. You know, um, I'll finish on this, but one of the things that changed my life um, was when we were out in school in California um, at Bethel Supernatural School of Ministry, someone asked Bill Johnson a question and they said to Bill, Bill, every time I go to pray. At night time. At night time, I just fall asleep. <laughs> every time I go to have an intentional time with God, I just fall asleep. <laughs> And Bill actually started crying. And he said something which really changed me, but he said, I used to love it when my children fell asleep on me. In fact, I used to hope that they would, just so I could adore them even more. And it really marked my walk, marked my, sort of the trajectory of my walk with God because he just wants us to fall asleep on him. Because mm -hmm. he just adores us. He wants to love on us. And that just really changed everything for me. So I hope that little nugget there changes things for you too. The pressure's off. There's no pressure. There's no striving. There's none of that stuff. There's no trying to get a head start on gaining God's favour. Yeah. We have everything we need. So enough from me, enough from us. Um, this has been fun. See you next time. Be blessed and go well. Love Loads you guys. Of love. Bye. Bye.